Welcome to Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from Central California with your hosts Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting video worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and broadcasting audio on the... Are you ready to witness something you cannot explain? Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central, broadcasting live from the bottom left-hand corner of the Nevada Triangle, in a city called Fresno, California. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Gonzalez, I am your host for the show, I'm also the founder of a group called the Sanger Paranormal Society, I've been investigating the paranormal going on 14 years, so I'm not, not up here talking about it, we're actually living it. I have a team, one of the members of that team sitting to the right hand side of me, my co-host, Mr. Alan Thomas. Hello everyone, it is good to see you. Thank you for showing up wherever you may be. We are broadcasting HD quality video live worldwide on live stream. And uh, we are going to be leaving live stream here in a couple of weeks if we uh, plan everything correctly. We're going to YouTube. And we're going to be broadcasting live on YouTube. And we'll let you know about that later on. Thank you for showing up wherever you may be. Hope that the volume and the oh, the video quality is to your taste. Hope it's working out for you. We have been uh, troubleshooting some things here. Because uh, during our Skype with Heidi and other artists or guests, Sometimes the audio is not right, so hopefully we know, you know, we got that straight. All right, well, thank you for showing up wherever you may be. Again, we're broadcasting live on the West Coast on uh, at 6 o'clock p.m. If you're watching us on the rerun right now on YouTube or on the archive at live stream, we broadcast Sundays at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. If you want to catch us live, and that way you can get on chat and chat with everybody else. If not, then you can catch it on the rebound on our YouTube channel, Paranormal Central, and you can watch this there. Alan posts the video. Give it, give him about a day to get the video up. Sometimes two. Sometimes two. Depending on if we have a part one or part two. <clears throat> and uh, and on live stream, you can always go back and watch the archive there anytime you want. And that is all in high def. Because I take it off the computer though, and then run it through a pro, you know, an editing software, I can only get 720p out of it. But still, that's high def. Right. Okay. Let me just check some volumes here. Check one, two, three. Yeah, I guess we're okay. All right. Well, let's get into it. Um, we have a two-hour show for you today. Let me go ahead and fill you in on. Uh, you know, we were not here last week. Why? Because it was Easter and uh, we got hate mail because we did not come on. And I, <laughs> I understand. I realize it. I know, you know, two hours a week is not enough for all of you guys. And I am so sorry. But, drum roll please. We are going five nights a week. <sighs> Plus Sunday. <sighs> oh my God. Okay, let me tell you what's happening. <clears throat> All right, clear my throat. <clears throat> yes, you, got you a heard big me. Big raise. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have been um, hearing. Uh, you know, we've been getting all your messages, and uh, we realized two hours is not enough. So we sat down with my production guys, and uh, we are. We're gonna go Monday through Friday, but for thirty minutes. Uh, th on the weekdays, we're going to give you 30 minutes Monday through Friday, okay? Um, 
and um, but it, but we it don't. Won't, it won't be live though. No, it's going to be recorded. It's going to be recorded. Okay, so the chat thing, you know, it's not going to make a difference. Um, but Sunday you can still come on chat for two hours with us and chat. Yes, yes, yeah. and we're going to record. <clears throat> I mean, record, we're going to go live on Sunday. Sundays mm -hmm. is when we're going to have our guests, and um, uh, and Sundays is going to be hopping. But you know what? During the week, it's also going to be hopping. We're going to have. We're going to throw in there some curveballs during the week. Uh, and, um, you know, it's only going to be 30 minutes. But we're going to make that 30 minutes worth your while. It's going to be a, a, a hard 30 minutes of cool stuff. Um, it, there's going to be surprises thrown in there on that 30 minutes. So, uh, you guys, if I was you, I would watch the 30 minutes. I mean, in 30 minutes is 30 minutes. It'll go by really quick. No commercials. Boom, boom, boom. Well, there might be and, a couple, and that's all going to be on YouTube. Yes, no live stream, only a on except YouTube. Except for the two hours. Now, thing. check this out. Maybe when, when we leave live stream, we are going. Our production guys are going to embed the video on our website, so you do not have to go to YouTube to find where we're going to be. All you got to do is go to paranormalcentral.net, and on the home page will be the embedded um, video. On the show you just stay there and it will turn on automatically and you can watch the show on our home page at the website paranormalcentral.net so now you don't have to go to live stream anymore you don't have to go to YouTube to try to find where we're gonna be just go to the website that's all, all you got to do um, I don't know what times we're gonna go on during the week um, you guys need to tell us what time because what we're gonna do is again our production crew is going to put a timer on these videos when to turn on. So on Monday, let's say you guys wanna go, if you guys want us to go at eight o'clock on Mondays at, at our website, then let us know if it's eight o'clock, then you, you know you watch the window on our website at eight o'clock on Mondays, and boom, it's gonna turn on 30 minutes, and then it's gonna turn off. And it goes for Sundays as well, once we go to YouTube. I don't know what time you guys want it, because you know during the week, people work, um, you know, you have families, you have TV shows you want to watch, <laughs> and I understand that totally. Now, even though you don't you don't get to see the show on, uh, you know, on Mondays to Fridays, it's always going to be on YouTube on our Paranormal Central channel. So if you don't catch it when it comes up at eight o'clock, let's say on Monday, no big deal. The next day you can go back to our Paranormal Central, you know, channel and watch it. It's going to be there. But and, it, and, I, and I'm going to talk to the production guys and see, like, even though we're not live, but we're on the, you know, the web page, we're going to see if we can't put a chat there. You know what I mean? On um, the web page. Oh. That way everybody can sit and chat while they watch the show. But only we, you know, and that way I could come in and even though it's I'm not live on the video, I will be live in the chat still chatting. You know, we could still sit in there and chat with you guys. I think that would be kind of cool, but I don't know if it could be done. So we'll see. Okay. Um, I will, I, again, we're going to try to make it simpler, but um, we're going to give you guys again 30 minutes more. Actually, yeah, th well, th 30 times five is, um, uh, you know, two and a half hours worth of more show during the week. 30 minutes because we realize that, um, that um, during the week, it's hard because, you know, people work and all that kind of stuff. So we need to know from you guys what time would you want the show to come on? So, and, uh, and, and I already seen a few in here said late evening, you know, yeah. early, early afternoon, late evening. Okay. Um, you know, go. the best way to do this is go fill out the form on paranormalcentral.net, the contact form. Put a time on there that you would be that that you would uh, want us to, to to run the show during the week okay i wonder if we could do a some kind of a poll on facebook or something on the facebook page oh there you, well yeah a lot of people aren't on facebook right now um who watch us unfortunately no i mean on the like page on the like page yeah okay and then we could just put a link to it and everybody link to it and and see all right, well, 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 let's do that. Instead of filling out the forms, because you know, that's going to be a lot of forms to fill out and me to, you know. Yeah. Um, after the show tonight, <clears throat> I'm going to go to my home page. Alan is going to go to his page. And on the Paranormal Central page, um, we're going to put on there what time you would like the weekday program to start for, you know, for the 30-minute show. And then uh, you guys can go ahead and leave comments there at what time. All right? I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, good idea. 
So, all right, let's do that. Okay, um, let me go ahead and tell you who we're going to have next week because I've already confirmed. Okay, you know what? We're getting a call from Palmdale. Let's go ahead and just bring this up really quick. Hey, Palmdale, you're on the air. Go ahead. I cannot get a live feed. You cannot what? Oh, you I can't. can't get a live feed. I'm trying to watch the show. I love your show. Thank what, you. What, Why? what kind of uh, what kind of uh, web you know what connection do you, do you have? I mean, what, uh, Time Warner. You should well, be able well, to get I, it. I, why why is, it, is it not coming up? I don't understand why. It will not come up. It says an error. Why? I love you guys. I'm trying to watch you live right now, but it will not work. See, and that's why we want to leave live stream. That is. One because of the yeah, it just says here. I see a picture of you guys that says here. See, and, and I think they're messing with us, man. I mean, the, the Donald Marshall video Ever pretty much. since then. You know, pretty much proves it right there. That, you know, they wiped out all the views because they did not want you guys to see how many people watch the show and how many people to this day are watching and yeah. and and I you know there's nothing we can do now. Is YouTube going to be any better? I don't know. Um, you know, Alan can can watch the numbers even closer. Like I said, we have a team who is going to be working with us from YouTube, from the YouTube okay. company. So hopefully, you know, it, things will get better. But why you can't watch us? Are, are you watch, trying to watch us on your cell phone or an iPad or a computer? No, uh, on my on my Apple. I mean, we're God. Apple. We have Time Warner. Yeah. Cable internet. Right. Do you, Do you have the app on it? The no. The live stream app. You might want to get the live stream app. I hit the live now. It just won't work. I love you guys. Thank I'm you. Gonna stick with you. How long have you got? How long have you been watching us? Uh, six months. Six nice. months. That's awesome. That, okay. You. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you finally found us. You know, we've been doing this for eight years. So, man, but you've missed a lot. Live, live that's stream, okay. Live stream has an app. Yes. And if you get the free app that goes on on your wireless devices, sometimes um, live stream is a weird thing. And if you don't okay. get the app and you're just trying to watch offline, you know, off the right, right, right. web, it doesn't work. Well, you know what? You go, know? go down. Um, Shoot, I, I, I don't know why you can't watch us. I, I really don't. It, it might be sense. live stream, though, like they're forcing people to get the app. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to force us to pay a huge amount of money just to get the analytics. Right, you right. Know? Yeah, um, okay. I, yeah, I don't know what to do. But uh, who's this? What's your name? I am Kelly Haberman. I love you guys. The more Bigfoot you talk about, the better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're trying. You know, when it, I mean, we... Whenever something comes across the table, then obviously we'll talk about it. Um, and we're, you know, when we don't talk about it, it's because there's really nothing to talk about at that point in time. And we're not going to make stuff up just to keep you entertained. That's just not what no, we do. I know. I know. So, That's yeah. why I love you guys. Um, I hope it gets worked out. And I wish you guys the best. And thank have you. a good evening. Awesome. Thank well, you. thank you. Appreciate it. I hope you can get on. So keep trying, okay? I will. Okay, thank thanks. you. See ya. All right, he was from Palmdale. Um, all right, uh, let's continue. There's some Bigfoots in Palmdale by there. Palmdale in the desert, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, some of the first reports I ever read after I saw my, you know, when I, when the internet came on, right? And I could read about when, because I wanted to see Bigfoot stuff, because I saw Bigfoot, and when the internet started putting stuff on, one of the very first stories was about. An air base over there, oh. and the Bigfoots were like going in there in their tunnels and walking around out there in the desert. And right. the Joshua well, I th trees. I thought you know. I thought that was the um, uh, the one right over here by uh, Santa Barbara. What's that? Um, oh, come on, Jeff. Um, Vandenberg. Vandenberg. Yeah, no. I heard Vandenberg. Though. Yeah, Vandenberg too. I heard that the military on their on their security cameras yeah. would, would watch them walk across the base and it's like, look, go to go to the other one. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you imagine in, that down by San Diego, they call they they actually have a name for them called Zubies. That's what they call Bigfoots. That's over crazy. There. I mean, to even to, to even hear about uh, our military say, "Hey, you know, we just saw." <laughs> um, uh oh, uh, pictures. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, all right. So let's continue on. Um, next week we have a killer guest. Um, his name yeah, is. Yeah, we almost had him this week. We, well, and I'm glad we didn't, only because he wants to prepare for this. His name yeah. is John Gress. Um, 
for all those who uh, have been around the paranormal field for a while and the Anunnaki, he was the one in 2005 who was filming a motion picture called the Anunnaki. And for some reason, um, you know, a lot of people knew that he was, what he was doing. He was literally filming a motion picture for the theaters of, call, you know, called the Anunnaki. Something happened. Um, he um, disappeared, sort of, kind of, and the movie just didn't, it didn't happen. And a lot of people did not know what happened when, you know, when he left. Um, so... A couple weeks ago, I sent him a message, and he answered me back. And he, uh, we talked a little bit on Friday, and he wants to come on our show next Sunday. For the first time since I, I want to say 2005, maybe he did another. He, he said he did another interview in Amsterdam, but otherwise, he's been out of the limelight. Um, but he is filming a series called The Anunnaki. Uh, and I don't know if it's specifically for YouTube or for what, but he, we're going to talk about that. And, and I'm, from what I understand, something major happened with the motion picture. Um, I'm not sure exactly what happened. I'm going to let him, if he can, talk about it. If he wants to talk about it, uh, it's up to him. Hey, he went under a um, an, non-disclosure. An NBC. Yeah, yeah, something happened. And unfortunately... Um, okay, there, there's a question... Um, about the YouTube thing okay. and yes okay um, okay the 30 minute shows will be recorded right but they will come on at a set time every day okay? right and I'm working on put and it's gonna come on you could either watch it on YouTube or you could watch it right embedded on our our paranormalcentral.net website I'm trying, I'm going to see if I could get a chat program on the website where we could sit and chat like we do here. It won't be a live show, but but, but the chat could be yeah, live. Yeah, I mean, I'll be on my device and Alan will be on right. his device. And, and get, you know what? Because to this day, since we've had this, I have never got the chat with you guys because I am doing all right. of this and I can't. And hopefully now on the, during the weekdays, I will be able to chat with you guys. Yeah, be able to sit down and yeah. and banter with everyone. And plus, the just like YouTube, um, will have. If you notice, I changed the YouTube a little bit. Okay, you guys, um, um, I put some sections right. So you have Paranormal Central section. Um, you have the the late the latest upload section which probably is almost the same thing and then i have a bigfoot section because um, we would talk about bigfoot and we have some really killer videos about bigfoot and i wanted to separate those so they're easy to find i mean it was getting really hard to find them in 189 shows okay now in 189 this is only like a couple of years of shows for us really we have over 500 only there you know it was like way back you know and it was on a different computers and yeah you know back in the olden days yeah and i mean there it, it, the quality wasn't there like uh -uh. it is now and but only we, we still have 189 shows on there so that's all set plus the new shows will have its own section so that if you want to go right to that section and look for certain shows it'll be a lot easier you won't have to like search around in all the shows, you know, it'll, we'll have it, we'll have it fixed up really nice. And it's not just going to be me anymore working on this is we'll have um, the production crew, the production crew and their editing software that is light years ahead in, of mine. In, in two and, weeks in three, two to three weeks, we are moving to a four camera shoot guys. Yes. All right. So we are stepping it up. Uh, you know, now what do you guys, you guys probably going, what do you mean four camera shoot? Well, this time we're going to have a camera dedicated like it is now. One right to now, me, like, one to Alan. This is called a one camera static shot. Okay. One what? camera static shot. Right. We'll have four cameras in the studio able to change and switch and look at Jeff and look at me and look at things and look at the wall. Right. So it won't be one camera static shot. So it's going to be like... Um, like the late night with Jimmy Kimmel, you know, uh, it's, it, we're, we're, I mean, we're trying to give you a professional show 
and we have the technology to, to do it. Uh, now we got a production crew who's going to come in and he's going to do it for us, and it's just it's going to make things just look a lot better, a lot you know, it's just very more more professional, more fun, really. more fun, yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's going to benefit us, going to benefit you, especially when we have live guests in the studio. As a matter of fact, on May the first, we're having a musical guest in the studio. I'm not going. I can't tell you. I can't tell you who. Now let's go back to John Grass. I'm on the dying on to I, tell I, everybody. I, I know. Too. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. You know. I'm go, you know, getting ahead of myself here. John <laughs> Grass. Um, he is coming on next Sunday. He's going to talk about the Anunnaki, his what he's doing with the series. Maybe he's going to talk about the movie. I don't know uh, what happened in the movie, but um, now you know. You guys know that I hate to tell you a week ahead of time who we're going to have next week because shows tend uh, actually no a lot of shows listen and they know we are on top of things here and they like to grab the guest before we have him on next week. John Grass committed to us being this first interview. All right? He already told me that. He goes, don't worry, Jeff. You guys are my first interview. So if all those yeah, other yeah. groups... And if he doesn't, we'll tie him up and, and make <laughs> him live in the studio for a while. <laughs> so um, that's what he said on Friday because I told him, you know what, um, I would love to start promoting you guys, but this is what happens, and, this, and it has happened many of times. Many. But he says, don't worry about it, Jeff. Um, let's just go. I want to go ahead and commit to you next Sunday. And the reason being that we were going to do it today, but he said, you know what, I want to put together a killer show for you guys. So he is going to show us some stuff that has never been seen uh, outside ever, ever, ever about on on, on how because you know John Gress is a special effects person. This guy will t I mean this is what this guy does for a living. He teaches people how to work in the special effects area, and then uh, Hollywood sends them their potential FX people to John in Florida, and he works on them, teaches them stuff, and he sends them back to Hollywood. That's what John does. So his special effects stuff is killer. Now he's going to show us some stuff that he's never shown anybody ever. And he, well, that's what he's doing right now. He's making up, I don't know, a slideshow or a video or something that we're going to be able to show you next Sunday while he's on the air. Okay. So I don't know how long we're going to have him for. Um, I will talk to John sometime this week. And we will see. I know, I mean, we like that. We're going to go two hours next week, just like we do every Sunday. And we'll see how long. I mean, I, he's gonna, he, I mean, he loves what we're doing. He loves the set, and I think he'll have a blast. Usually, people like, I mean, do have a blast when they come on here. And I think we'll be able to to talk to him for a long time, uh, not just about the Anunnaki, but other things as well. It's, it's, it's paranormal, you know. And and uh, we'll go and we'll see what happens. But uh, I can't wait. Um, a lot of people know who John Gress is. When I told some people about him that he was coming on, they freaked. Because the Anunnaki is one of those subjects in the paranormal world that people definitely get into. Because it is there with religion, Anunnaki, Planet X, Nibiru, old ancient ruins, who was here first, who was here second. And why we are here, yeah. supposedly. So, you know, all that plays into what he's going to talk about and the reason why he got so involved in the Anunnaki because it piqued his interest. All right? So. Yeah, there is, yeah, there is a trailer everyone can watch, too. Um, there is. I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, the trailer is yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. And I think that was from the movie back in 2005. Um, but, I, again, I don't know. Yeah, it's the old one. It's the old There's one. There's not a new one. Right, right, right. So. It, I was kind of tripping because it has the. The. The winged saucer. Yeah, the yeah. same thing ancient alien right, shows. Right. You know, it has all the ancient alien birds flying around. Well, you know what? He um, He's going to tell us, because uh, he did research, because he wanted to make his movie or his series using what is out there right now, what people are witnessing on walls, on, on you know. Um, he's going to tell us how he mo mocked up his, his, his you know, his, his UFO, whatever you want to call it. But anyways... We're going to let him talk about all that kind of stuff. We're going to have fun next week. It's going to be a good show, just like every Sunday. And, and there's a Heidi today. Yeah, we have Heidi today. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So, John Gress, um, next Sunday, 6 o'clock. 
everybody better be here. And like uh, our buddy here at Palmdale who can't get on the show. I don't know why, dude, you can't get on. I have no idea. Um, but uh, hopefully you can back then, uh, you know, next week anyways. All right. Um, again, back to uh, May the 1st. I have a musical guest coming in here. Um, you know, I've told you guys before that there are two subjects that I truly enjoy talking about and getting into. One is paranormal. The next is music because I am involved in both of those big time. And it just so happens that I have two artists that I truly love and that, that you know I grew up listening to that I consider to be my favorite artists of all time. One group is, is called, they're called The Cars. I'm pretty sure Rick Ocasek and all those guys. And the other one is, I'm not gonna say, <laughs> but it just so happens that I got the lead vocalist of, um, of this band coming in here. All right, and they're from the UK. I can't wait. All right, they're from the UK. You guys, they have many, many hits under the belts. Um, he's gonna bring his guitar. Hopefully we can get uh, maybe, a, well, I don't know. He's gonna, he's gonna play live and he, he loves Paranormal. And, and I kind of knew that because of the songs that he writes. The, the lyric content um, and the music videos involve sort of kind of the stuff we talk about here. So when I invited him, he obviously he said yes. And I can't wait because when I talked to him on the phone a while back, like, you know, to confirm the date, um, I was stuttering on the phone. I was speechless. My wife was laughing at me inside because <laughs> I could got starstruck. I got starstruck. Mm -hmm. I don't get starstruck, guys. And I got starstruck talking to this dude over the phone. Really? Now, I wonder what's going to happen when I'm sitting right here and he is sitting on the sofa because we're going to pull in the sofa and he's going to be sitting right here and you guys are going to be watching him and we're going to talk. And, you know, it's going to be a uh, type of atmosphere where he's probably going to have a glass of wine and I'm going to have a glass of something up here and we're going to drink. We're going to be eating stuff and we're going to be talking like if we're at a club or at a bar and we're just going to be shooting the you know what and, you know, I'm gonna, we're, we're going to have fun. And, I, and, and at that point in time, we're going to have a four-camera shoot, five-camera yes. shoot. So it is going to be done right. And, yes, you guys, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. I got goosebumps. See? Woo! I can't wait. I'm excited. All right? This is the stuff that we're going to bring you, and I want to continue bringing this stuff to you. And we're going to go straight to TV. I guarantee you it's going to happen. And we're going to continue on. Um, and we're not only that, we're going to own the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> we're absolutely, yeah, I make a prediction, we're going to own the internet. We're doing really well right now on numbers, guys. We're doing really, really well on numbers. Um, and uh, it's just a matter of time. It is just a matter of time for all those other, well, never mind. Yes, okay, <laughs> so anyways, all right, let's continue on. Um, am I gloating? Of course I am. Man, you know, maybe we, we'll, we'll, like, turn this into a, a bar, you know, we'll have, like, the lights <laughs> going and everything. I know we could do it. Um, you, you know, we've... We, we, We've been doing this a while. I have been doing this a while. Uh, a lot of time, a lot of energy involved. And I get happy when something is turning out right the way I, 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 I visually, you know, I, I, I vision something like this happening. Um, we're not even close to where I want to be, guys. Oh, my God, not even close, man. All right, this is, I, I, we're getting there. We are getting there. And you guys who have been with us for the longest time, thank you. For those who have just showed up, um, thank you. Thank you. Um, and don't stop watching and don't stop listening because we're getting, it's going to get, it's going to get better than it is now. How? I guarantee you it is going to get better. Sorry, I'm just burping away. I'm, you know, drinking my soda here. And okay. All right. Let's continue on. All right. Here we go. Um, all right. What do I want to talk about right now? Um, Let's talk about man. It would oh, be nice no. to get Santana. Who? Maybe down in maybe down the road. Santana. Yeah. Oh my name is a dog on here. Dog on it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to look on here for a, uh, a picture. We can do the witchy woman song. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the paranormal because that's why you guys are here, right? All right. Um, you know, I oh, was about a month ago, two months ago, I had. Um, my friend Joni Gonzalez, no relations to us, from Orange County. She actually called in because her 
brother would go to visit them, Frankie, and stay in their guest room, and he would see things in that room. Matter of fact, the last time he was sleeping, and I think there's two beds in there, and he said he turned around and there was a lady sleeping in the other bed. Freaked him out. He said, that's it. I am done. I am not coming back to this house. And um, we told Joni what to say. And and for those of those who remember, their power blew. The, the power transformer blew in front of their house because whatever was evil that was in there shot right out of the house and blew the transformer. Southern California Edison came out and they were like freaking. They had no idea why the transformer blew only in their block in front of their house. And they were like, they had, we had no idea what happened. They had no idea what happened. They had to change out the transformer. Joni knows what happens because it happened right after she finished, you know, walking around blessing the house. Um, but now the thing is back. Yes, it is back. So I said, okay, what is going on? Um, is, is, is whatever there, is it attached to your brother maybe, to Frankie? Because we never told, asked him if, because uh, he was in the military, retired now. Did he ever mess with a Ouija board? Did he do something very crazy when he was overseas in the military? Being what about sending something home? Well, you know. then, then, and Joni asked him, and pulled, you know, I guess he must have called him that night because it was like a couple of nights ago. She was freaking, and then she goes, uh, I, I, I asked her, call Frank up and ask him the truth. Has he done any bad things? Use the Ouija board? No. He said, no, I have never done anything. Then I asked her, um, have you ever, uh, ha, do you have anything in that room, this particular room that this all happens? Do you have anything in that room that was brought into that room from, let's say, a store, an antique store, a yard sale. And and I don't know why I don't have it on there. I could have sworn I put it on here, but it's not on here. Doggone and I'm upset. But then she took a snapshot and she sent it to me and there was three dolls on the bed. And I'm all, oh, man. Dolls? Dolls. Man, almost always. <laughs> like, dolls are a big one. They really okay. are. So um, I, I asked her, you need to get rid of these dolls. And, and I don't know she I don't know if she's done it yet, but uh, she's going to get rid of these dolls because we need a this process of elimination basically because we don't know it could be a piece of furniture it could be something in that room that's causing all this but right away she placed three dolls that were on the bed and she took a snapshot she sent it to me and we went bingo I have a feeling it's one of those dolls are, are they old dolls they're old dolls right okay. like a, from a yard sale and an antique store she has other dolls that were purchased from a you know regular store like Toys R Us or whatever, but um, they're they're not, you know, it's got to be these other dolls. So she's going to get rid of them, and then she's going to bless the house again, and then and then uh, she's going to let and me know gonna what They're going to change happened. the Transformer again. <laughs> yeah. no. We'll the, see. Um, yeah, right. What about he... he he when he went overseas, did he ever did he send anything home or bring anything with him? I, did, a, I never a lot asked, of, a lot of people, they go on vacation or do something like that, and then they ship stuff home. Mm -hmm. And usually that's where, that's where it is. Okay, it's in that. It's in that. Okay, um, and and, and yeah, antique point. stores and stuff. Right, but wouldn't it yeah. be in her room in her house though? I think she would have realized, you know, Frank. I, you know, I never even asked her that, but the dolls came up, and sure enough, there were some dolls. So she's gonna get rid of them. Um, it, 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 they're not anything to her. They were just dolls that were given to her by I think her mom for her daughter. And they've had them for a while, uh, I think, when she was a baby. And, and I wish I had the photograph. I could have sworn I put them on here, and I don't see them. I'm sorry, you guys. But just, you know, you're right. Your regular old 1950s dolls, you know, with the, the curly hair and the glass face. And that's the type of dolls I'm talking about. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date on what's going on with that. And hopefully she can get rid of whatever is there because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really bothering them big time. Um, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Um, let's continue on. I, um, I have a neighbor that that I'm in talks with right now, and she's showing me some pretty cool pictures, and she's dealing with something, and it might be something that we, you know, that we show on that we're gonna bring and show on the show. Ah. I mean, she has she has some really killer pictures, but I haven't shared with everybody yet because I I want to go over to the house and see what it's all about and. Maybe this might be something I might share here in a few shows. Okay. 
Um, here is, uh, I, I, you know, when I was mentioning John Grass, I didn't put up some pictures. Um, here are some snapshots. I think this is from the movie itself, uh, some of the special effects. But there is a snapshot of the movie. I'm, I'm, I don't know what this stuff is all around the edge. It looks like to me as if this was the opening of the DVD when you, you know, when you, you know, put in the DVD and all of a sudden all of these uh, things come up and you click on them. That's what it looks like to me. Let me put up one more. And, um, and it's John Naki. Uh, and his name is, again, John Gress. For all those who, I mean, he has 5,000 friends. And he already, he's already at his limit. So there's a lot of people know who he is. Because when 2005 came out, you know, uh, John, everybody was talking about this movie. All right. Let's continue on again. Uh, let me show you this here. This is kind of cool. Um, in Russia... Uh, I don't know exactly what part of Russia, but um, some company, a milk company, put out these milk cartons. Check this out, guys. These are actually milk cartons, and it's called Molo Cow. And the top is a flying saucer, and you can unscrew that and pour out the milk. Is that cool or what? In Russia. You, you, a company is actually selling this in the markets in Russia. Is that cool or what? And obviously the cows there, like, is being abducted and and taken up, you know, upon uh, into the spacecraft. But what a cool concept! They really need to bring this down to the Americas. Bring it down this way, guys, because you guys would sell a lot, or just sell the um, the concept to somebody. Because I'm pretty sure it's patented. But uh, there you go. That I just wanted to show you guys that you know we we I, I I place a lot of stuff on my Facebook wall and I know a lot of you guys aren't friends only because I have a limit, um, but um, this is the stuff that I put on there because I think it's really cool, and and uh, and you guys should really uh, see this stuff because it's cool stuff. All right, all right. Let's continue on here because it's it's all about showing you guys and telling you guys about it. Um, here is a photograph. Obviously, it is Photoshop. It is not real. It's not a person in a suit. This picture was on Facebook, and it was under the Facebook comment under um, the Kings Canyon National Park Post Office. They actually placed this um, for it April, was April Fool's joke. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. let's think about this, though. We have the Kings Canyon National Park Service's post office yeah. putting out a April Fool's joke, and it has... A Bigfoot involved. All right, so sit, think about that. Um, you yeah, know, obviously some. Uh, like obvi maybe some of these guys don't know, but where we our <laughs> spot, not too far away, it would be bordering the Sierra National Park. And um, so somebody who works for the post office has Bigfoot in their brain. If he's going to think about this, or if she's going to think about posting something like this, she has Bigfoot in the brain. Why is that? You know, obviously, do they talk about it a lot up there? Is it something that uh, people walk in and say, hey, that I saw it again behind my house. I'm here to pick up my mail. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So I just found it interesting that the post office at the Kings Canyon National Park would put something like this out on April Fool's. All right. Think about that, guys. Just think about that. All right, let's continue on. I actually seen that one uh, about two months ago in, on Facebook, and it said, uh, write a caption, right? And they had all these people writing a caption. For that? For that? For that picture. Yeah. Oh, so but it wasn't on the snow, or was it? No, it looked just like it was that picture, but they were saying, uh, put a caption, right? And there were some pretty funny captions. Okay, because of where his hands are at and all right, that kind yeah, of stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, people were talking about that, too, and it was up. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Um, last month, late last month, I think it was like the 28th of March, um, maybe a little bit before that, Japan launched a satellite into space. And it was called the Black Hole Satellite. And I think it was just a large telescope. Um, it was their newest space telescope. Not far after it was launched up into space, it went silent for some reason. 
Oh, the Tokyo one? Yeah, the Japan one. Japan yeah, one. yeah. It, it, uh, they lost signal from it completely, and they were freaking out. They had no idea what was going on. As a matter of fact, I think our military got involved to see if they can track it. But it was spinning out of control like something hit it. And somebody actually said um, that they saw it or they had it on radar or whatever, but they also said that there were some objects that were around the satellite that weren't supposed to be there. Like seven objects, if I'm not mistaken. Go Google it. It's all there. And uh, so they don't know if, you know, the odds of asteroids or space debris hitting satellites are just remote. It just, you know, because the, the vast space is, tr you know, millions and millions of months. I mean, you, there's no way. I'm not, I'm not going to say no way. But the odds of a satellite getting hit by debris of some type is just remote. It is. Um it would have destroyed it. Yeah, but now they said it was tumbling out of, it was just tumbling, and then now it's sending signals back, like it's back to normal. So they don't know what happened, or maybe they do know what happened, and they're not telling us, but check this out. Um, a little while ago, oh, a little, about three hours ago, our, our conspiracy guy, Mr. Mike Smith, he sent me over in messaging he sent me over a couple of snapshots, and I'm going to send you, I'm going to show you guys really quick what he sent me. He says, and this here it is. He says, a few minutes ago, I got a strange text from a friend of mine who works at the David Dunlap Observatory here. She says three massive objects roughly 75 miles long by 10 miles wide have appeared in our solar system within the last 24 hours and i believe this is in canada i think um, they are moving in unison and they have just crossed Gan ganymede's orbit about six eight hundred thousand miles from jupiter i contacted the and this is mike speaking i've contacted the david dunlap observatory and they sat uh, it has not or they said it has not click on here uh, said it has not been used by any astronomers for the next the past two days. Um, so he sent me that, and I went, wait a minute. Last night at 1023, I got this message. There were three dots. Two disappeared as I was adjusting my camera. This is the last of the three. They were in a triangle shape. You can see if you look at the separate tab. This is not in a straight line. I saw three just for a second, then changed my I think said lens. Um, I got this at 1023 from this guy, uh, here, and, and then he actually sent me a photo, and here it is. I, I, am, am, I, am I showing you guys this? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I, I'm thinking what he's showing this guy, Aaron, is this object here. I don't know, um, but it's kind of odd that Mike received this message three hours ago about three objects, very large. And then last night at 1023, this guy sent me this. Now, this guy by the name of Aaron Arion, I went to go look him up and he's gone. He's no longer on Facebook. He sent me this. I can't, oh, I, Orion. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry, Orion. Aaron Orion. And I can't find him on Facebook anyplace. Like, he's gone. He disappeared. So I don't know what the heck is going on here. But do I, it's, is it a coincidence that Mike got this information? He didn't, Mike didn't know about this person sending me this information last night. Not at all. Until I sent him, after he sent me that, I sent him the stuff and he said, WTF, what? <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know what's going on, uh, but I, 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 it's a coincidence. Is it a coincidence that three objects were spotted in Canada and the observatory and then all of a sudden this guy said through his telescope lens that he got three objects as well forming a triangle or whatever so I don't know there's something going on up there right now because we're getting now con confirmation from two different people that this has happened uh, well then and I was talking to another friend he sent us a video on our Facebook and it's like flashing really bright flashing because what he saw and what I saw on the video mm -hmm. is exactly what I was watching, I think, the night before. 
you know, when we, we get, we see those ones and it's almost like iridium flares. If I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's like the solar panel turning and then it glints or reflects the sun for a second and it flashes down on the earth. But only these seemed big. Only you, there was no ship. And it was moving. But only it had a really bright flash to it. And I, I saw it like three times. And I sat out there probably another 30 minutes after the third time. And I, and I didn't see it anymore. And it was moving real slow. Real slow. And it flashed probably like four times. Uh... But he showed me a video and it was exactly the same thing in one night the next night from when I looked at it. I wonder if it's anything like that. Because hmm. anything really big out there would put a put a pretty big flash. Right. You know, if it turned or any or, you know, made some kind of move where it would reflect for a second. So like if you guys are out and out and it's not cloudy and raining keep your eye on the skies man there's been some weird things uh happening in the sky like i saw another one it was um two what was it two comets came flying by almost like tandem through the atmosphere they say they're comets but it, comets they bring a lot of debris i don't think it's comets i think it's more like uh meteors or something but hmm. but a lot of stuff in the sky lately a yep. lot a lot of stuff um, all right, let's continue on. Um, you know what? We, we It's been a long time since we've taken calls. Obviously, we took a call this morning. I mean, this morning. <laughs> a little bit ago. A little bit ago. Yeah. Um, anybody want to call in with any stories that you have? You guys want to talk to us? I mean, they're, they're, they're even talking about in here, like, people that are have had a paranormal experience uh -huh. are prone to have more paranormal experiences. And I actually like, go ahead and call in you guys. And we'll still talk about this. Oh, the morning. number you guys want to hear the number, uh, area code five, five, nine, two, eight, seven, eight, three, six, seven, area code five, five, nine, two, eight, seven, eight, three, six, seven. If you want to call in right now and talk to us, um, yeah, oh, that's right. Uh, Jupiter last week also got hit by something. Thanks, Mike, for reminding me. Um, yeah, that was cool. There is a video, and there's actually a mark on Jupiter where some, or they say something actually hit. And somebody was actually watching Jupiter at the time it actually happened, and he sort of kind of got it on video. Um, but Jupiter got hit by something very large last week. Uh, right around the same time, the satellite... Uh, Japan satellite uh, got knocked off the air. And then all of a sudden, you know, three objects were seen last night. I don't know. It just, uh, you know, all these volcanoes, you know, last week we had four volcanoes blow within 24 hours and very large ones. Japan, Philippines, Russia, and Mexico. And it's 8367 559 No, yeah. What, what did I say? What number did I give? 559-287-8367. Five, five, I was the one. I wrote wrong number. Wow. Well, okay. Sorry. So, it, again, area code 559-287-8367. Five, five, <laughs> if you want to call <laughs> right now, go for it. Um, and, uh, and if you want to talk to us, go for it. If you have any suggestions, you can also go ahead and let us. I uh, hope it's not a troll. Because, uh, you know, we don't have anybody monitoring the phones. So if you start saying something, then I'm going to knock you off. So, uh, but there you go. Um, yeah, um, I, you know, I'm, okay, here comes the call. From Northern Los Angeles, 805, I'm not going to say who it is, but let's go and find out who it is. Hello, Northern Los Angeles, you are on the air. Go for it. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? This is uh, Chris from Paso Robles. Hey, Chris. Hey, how's it going, dude? Good, how are you? <laughs> Good, man. AKA Lone Wolf 61 from Cat. In case you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> Cool man. Um, you know, I we went to Morro Bay last week for Easter. Uh, took a couple of days. Went to go visit uh, Cheryl's mom who lives over there, 
and um, Chris lives in Paso Robles, and I just, you know, we went and I met him at, at a bar in, in Morro Bay. Just We had a drink with, for a couple hours. We were just talking. So, what's going on, dude? Not much. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, first of all, for all you uh, peeps and chat, um, Jeff is a super cool guy in person. Liar. So, you know, don't, don't let his on-screen persona fool you. He's actually uh, pretty cool. Wait a minute! Wait, 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 wait! How, how does that differ on, from what I'm doing now? <laughs> Am I stuck up in the butt or what? No, <laughs> That's funny. no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, Jeff's a really, Jeff's a really cool guy, and uh, I really had, I really, uh, it was an honor to speak with him. He's really cool, and I hope to work with him a little bit uh, more in the future, if possible. And um, I got, I had to tell you guys a story. You know, me and my weird stories. Um, I work at a factory of about 75 people. And we've had more paranormal stuff there lately than you can shake a stick at. Last week, I had a couple of ladies actually come to my office separately, but, you know, in tears, saying if they had to go into a certain room again, they would literally quit their jobs. Wow. And... Um, Apparently, there was two girls and a guy, and they went into this room to do some work, and they heard footsteps and this and that. Well, one of them heard footsteps, didn't say anything, and then all three of them had gotten grabbed, and something, like, yelled at them really loud, and so they ran out running and screaming. So the lead guy called me at, like, midnight saying, hey, we got a problem. And uh, so I talked to him for a while, and then the next day, I literally had these ladies come in and say that they didn't want to... Uh, that they would quit their jobs if they had to, uh, you know, go into this area anymore. So I literally had to reconfigure the area, and I told them, you know, I understand, and uh, you don't have to go in there anymore. But um, following up that story, I was talking to a guy in the bakery, and I see things, as I told you guys, you know, prior, all over the place. I saw something that was even surprising, even to me, who things you've seen and, you know, kind of done and, and all, and you see something else. And what I saw just like it had ever been human. And I was talking to a guy, and from about 10 feet away, I see this thing, and basically, have you ever seen those those lycra suits people buy where they put them on, they're very tight around their body, and you can't see into detail their body? I, I'm not sure what they call them, like lycra body suits or something. It looked like that, but it was covered... Instead of being um, shiny, it looked like it was hair, if that makes any sense. It was really thin, and the creepy thing about it was when it knew, realized I could see it, you could see it kind of repulse a little bit, and then when it disappeared, it kind of slithered like a snake. Now, you, you are telling me you have a gift. You can see things. You can sense things. As a matter of fact, you were telling me that you've been helping people for a long time now. Yes. When did you last, uh, when did you figure out you had this gift? Um, Tom, I mean, the gift of seeing things probably when I, you know, just from my earliest memories are of things paranormal when I was probably four or five years old. And as far as when did I discover I could help someone, um, probably I would say about 10 years ago. And I had suffered up to that point. And then once I discovered, I really got into the word of God, like I said, and, uh, when we met, and uh, I discovered it's all right there. We all have the power to do so. We just have to kind of, uh, you know, believe, take it to heart, and do it. And in fact, I was listening when you said that you were trying to help these people. I had a case one time where I uh, I, I saw this thing. I was in this house helping this lady out, and I saw this thing, and it, to me it appeared as black smoke just moving around this room, and I was trying to cast it out and, and uh, kind of you know, rebuke it. And it wouldn't leave. And this is, you know, I'm talking a battle now of a you know, song. And then finally I said, the blood of Christ will burn you like hot lava if you don't leave. And the thing took off right out the window. So the reason I'm telling you this is he said, you know, you, you tried helping a lady out and the thing came back or whatever. So the next day the lady, I was checking in with her and she said it was fine for two days. And on the third day, I got a call at about 3 a.m. Uh, from a lady that was fairly hysterical. And uh, she said that um, the thing had pinned her down in bed and whispered in her ear, where's your buddy Chris now to protect you? 
<laughs> maybe I left, maybe I didn't. Wow. So she, she told me that, and I said, oh, geez, you know. So, of course, when things like this happened, I went back to the, you know, went back to the Bible because I was kind of uh, confused as to why this happened. And even in the Bible, you know, the apostles went out and ca- tried to cast out some demons, and they basically kind of got beaten up, and Jesus had told them that some will not leave except by fasting and prayer. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I fasted for a couple of days, and I went back with a Bible instead of kind of freewheeling it, and I was able to get rid of it. But certain people, in fact, I even mentioned it in chat earlier tonight, certain clients I've had, they want to know why I can't or won't help them, and they're like practicing uh, witches. Right. And, and and they're wondering why I can't help them. And, you know, if, if there's an intention in the house that they wanted to be there and they invited to be there, um, you know, no matter what I do, they're always, you know, want to come back. And so before I help someone, there's a lot of questions I ask them if it's a stranger. You know, I'll ask them about their physical condition, their mental condition. Uh, are, are they under on it, prescription medications? And I ask them about their children if they played with Ouija boards and whatnot, and I even ask if they know about their parents or grandparents, because unfortunately, evil can be generational. And um, even if you haven't done anything, if your parents or grandparents have been into it, unfortunately, you're going to suffer until you break the chain, so to speak, of, you know, kind of speaking out against it and driving it out. So. Yeah. I did. A, um, I actually was reading about that, in, um, and I found in, in the Bible it says that uh, somebody's sin, like some, you know, you can sin, and it'll that sin will carry for four generations. I believe it. And so, I had a, uh, you know, I had a spirit. This was really the, the saddest ones to me are the ch- child spirit, and I had a little kid. Uh, I had a little kid spirit that came to me, and he looked like he was from, like, the 50s or the 60s, you know? He had blue jeans on, a white T-shirt, and he had the crew cut, you know, the flat-top crew cut hair, and the kid was in tears, and he says, and he had passed away, and he said, I didn't do anything wrong. Why am, why am I cast there? And they keep telling me, evil in, evil out, evil in. And the kid kept saying this over and over, evil in, evil out. And he was crying, and this detained me for years. As I'm the story right now, I'm ice cold. I'm got goosebumps because I didn't feel that I could help this kid. And to this day, I feel like I failed this kid because I don't know that I was able to help him. But it was the creepiest, saddest, most disappointing thing you've ever heard when you see this kid about eight years old say, "What you know? Like, what have I done?" And he kept saying, "Evil hit, be loud," and you know, I, I've thought about this for years. This, it's been years since this kid came to me. But, you know, there's some there's some people, unfortunately, there's some people in the world that do some really awful things to each other. And the uh, result is, you know, innocent, nice, you know, normal people suffer from it. Horrible. I, I just heard some loud booms. Did you? Yeah. Where's that from? I don't know. But I heard him. Well, yeah. I wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Chris. I just heard some loud booms. Mm. Hold on. They were loud. Okay, I've got to tell you guys uh, one thing that's happened, and I don't know if this is it or not. But I've been talking to people on the phone that tell, tells me that they can hear a witch or hear a woman talking and even saying cuss words. So I don't know if something weird's happening now because I'm telling you guys this or not, but I've had it before where people yeah. suddenly say, I'm "Who's getting, that lady on the okay. line?" and I don't hear it. Okay, well I'm I'm getting confirmation from Mike that he said, "Yep, I heard him too." There's uh, explosions, very loud explosions, faintly in Clovis. Holy crap, dude! I felt them in my stomach mm-hmm. right now. Very oh, loud. Oh, okay. No the physical. Th- is- yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's something happening right now. Um. They were loud explosions. I don't know. I, like, boom, boom. Yeah. Oh, crap, dude. This yeah. this is... Wow. It wasn't an earthquake. I, I don't know. Nah. It wasn't an earthquake because no, I didn't no, shake. No, 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 no. They were, they were loud, loud, loud booms. Well, you know, you know, Mike, the... Um, wow. One of the things I'm finding, because I do a lot of what you're doing right now, too, mm-hmm. or also, and... Um, 
sometimes, you know, the people want help and you go over there and you're able to help them and everything and long as you're there, you know what I mean? And, right. But as soon as you leave, um, they want everything to go back to normal, their normal, and their normal allows those things. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they sometimes the people tell me lies because they're so afraid, and, you know, that these things are in there and scratching them and attacking them at night and choking them out and doing all this stuff. And, but, and you get rid of it, and then almost instantly after you leave, they start having problems, you know, and then they start calling you and stuff. And I, I've actually... Right. Actually, tell them, tell the people now, like, you know, like I find out where they're at and they pretty much got to, um, uh, you know, change their self, change their belief system with me yep. or I don't even want to mess with them because, I mean, they're just going to keep calling me and and uh, I can't help them. You know what I mean? Like only while I'm standing there and then I don't I and they give me authority over their house and everything but then but only it only lasts while I'm standing there you know what I mean as soon as I right. go home they can they can invite it right back in and not even know they did and even the energy yeah. in your household I mean I've been to households where the husband or even sometimes the wife is either into drugs or an alcoholic or something there's all this like tension and mm -hmm. And if you have a lot of bad energy, I mean, I, I don't mean to sound, you know, Mr. New Age Crystal guy here, whatever, but if you have a lot of bad energy in your home, it just feeds the fire. It's like fuel. So at my home, you know, I it's peaceful in my home. Where there's no stress and, and this and that. And I had a lady call me up that was, I had helped. The one lady I told you about where it came back, I'd helped her friend. And then all of a sudden she called me one day and said, hey, this lady's, has, having problems, can I give her your number? I said, sure. So the lady calls me up. And she, I tell right off the bat, she had mental issues. And she kept saying to me, you just need to get rid of it. You need to do this. You just need to do that. And I was trying to interview her and ask her questions. And I said, I'm sorry, that's not, it works. I can't just wave a magic wand from 20 miles away and help you out. I need to, you know, I have to ask you a few questions. And uh, eventually she went to a hotel and kind of barricaded herself into a hotel. And um, I told her I couldn't help her, and then the police ended up getting involved. In and but she found out she had a really bad chemical imbalance. I like guess with you know with medication, she became you know normal again. So there's some people too that are not in the right mind, but right. you know the, the the ones that I've helped, like you said, you know I walk in their house and and I always tell them I look at your social media, I'm gonna look at everything, and if you lie to me, I can't help you because right. you know. Well, I mean, the, when the, when you can help them, it's really cool. Like, me and Jeff helped these people at their house, and um, they called, like, two weeks later because we had no idea what was, you know, after we left. I mean, we found out uh -huh. the problem, and we took care of it, but that we didn't know, you know, like, you don't know after you leave, you know, if it's, like, permanent or if the people, you know, fall back on it or whatever. But only they were telling us, uh, the guy told us that it smelled like roses in their house for, like, three or four days. Nice. Um, they said the, the vibe, the whole vibe changed. Like, you're talking about, you know, uh, how, it, you know, there's bad vibes or something like that, and it kind of, they feed on it. Well, they said everything just went, 100% you're 180 degrees you know total good vibes all the time everything felt really good they haven't had a problem since and I even told them you know like if if you ever have a problem call me again you know I'll come and help you again because I mean it, it was really good to hear that though you know you know it's funny I think I might even mention this to Jeff that you know I had this weird thing happen where you know I, I believe like you and Jeff and these guys that um, uh, there are no coincidences. So my my wife drives a Lexus, and her car messed up, and they had to bring her a car. And the guy that brought her a car, he was a, a black gentleman, maybe about my age, maybe a few years older. And we started talking, and all of a sudden, just right after that, he looked at me and said, "You're into spiritual warfare, aren't you?" And I said, "Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I am." We started talking, and he said. There's a guy 
dry over in a Tascadero, which is the next town over. I'm sure you're just familiar with it. Um, he's a pastor, yeah. and, he, and he needs your help. So I'm thinking, why would a pastor need my help with <laughs> spiritual warfare? And I'm going to call him this week. I haven't had a chance to call him just last week or a week ago, so I haven't called him yet. He gave me his number and says, oh, he really needs to speak to you. And I've got to tell you guys up front, I'll keep the you guys updated into what happened, but there's something about this that kind of stinks to me, if for lack of a better phrase. But um, I'm almost not wanting to call this guy. And I don't know why, and I always call him like, oh, there's something wrong with this situation. Now, I don't know if this is like a trap for me or something. I don't know. But he's like, yeah, this guy, his name is Pastor Paul. He needs to talk really bad. And he gave me his number, texted me, you know, have to talk to him yet. And, and uh, I said no. And there's something inside of me that says, is wondering, should I call him or not? But just for the experiment and for the paranormal central, the buddy's in chat. Mm-hmm. I'm going to call him this week to find out what's going on. But something tells me that there's something weird about this guy or the situation. So... I'm going to talk to him this week and then uh, either in chat or, you know, in a call in in the future. Right on. I will uh, yeah. I'll let you guys happen. Absolutely. Let, let us know what what's up with that because, you know, when you told me a pastor needs your help, I'm all thinking, wait a minute, guys. Why would a pastor, somebody who preaches the word uh, or preaches God, Jesus, need help? Billy, sometimes... Sometimes these what I what I found anyways, and it's why I don't go to church. Right, is that they're not teaching right? You know what I mean? Or like, they're not there for that reason. There's there's, there's musicians. Or, yeah, or this or this guy's like a fraud or something. I'm with Jeff, and when I told, it's funny because Jeff and I are on the same wavelength on mm-hmm. a lot of stuff. And when I told Jeff this story, the look on his face was kind of the way I felt. I'm like, <laughs> okay, wait a minute here, what's going on? You know. Right, well, Jeff, is the way I, the way I interpreted it. Yep, exactly. Well, they'll, they'll be in it for everything but really the religion. Mm-hmm. They'll be in it for either the notoriety, the the money, uh, money, you know. or to fool around, or you know the uh, yeah, yeah, pandering, yeah. whatever you want to call it. You yeah. know, like the, like I was in Africa in 1987 with some top preachers in this uh, international church. And some things were happening that was real supernatural. And I was getting in trouble by the from the these guys, right? And they're they're the top guys of the church of that denomination. And I couldn't figure out why they were getting me in trouble whenever I thought it was their job to do whatever I was doing. You know what I mean? What God was having me do. Right, and they were like getting they were livid i mean they they were so dead against it that they were they were even putting a guard on with me so that nothing could happen, but only I didn't have any control over it, and I mean when things start happening, if God wants it done, it gets done. you know what I mean like, you know you know why that is Alan is because they realize that here's this this uh you know there's this white guy from the States and he's really doing our job, what we should be doing here. You know what I mean? And it was probably, they're probably angry and felt guilty because they realized that you were getting more accomplished (laughs) than they were and that you were more, you know, legitimate to the cause than they were. So that's probably why he had uh, such a hard time. Yeah. They, it was a trip because really I hadn't, I I hadn't ever went to church. And in fact, it was just when I was barely, found jesus you know what i mean i was having my own problems and it was actually a work issue de- work thing to go with them i was just a cameraman i wasn't i wasn't having any affiliation with a, any church or anything i was just a cameraman and uh man all heck broke loose over there and it and we have it really good here it's a different kind of evil you know, when you're over there, it's really in your face and everybody believes it. You know, you got the witch doctors and the shamans and all this thing. I mean, it's really right out there. You know what I mean? Like when you come over here, it's more hidden. I mean, it's still blatant, but it's in your face. It's in the music and this and that. But over there, they'll, they'll come straight up and, you know, like spit 
something on you, you know, and do like a voodoo curse right in your face, you know. Unlike yeah, over I, here, I, you know. <laughs> right. I, I, I once worked with a guy, Alan, that um, he was a black gentleman who had a church in Los Angeles when I lived down there. And a really nice guy, his name is Willie Richards, he's one of my best buddies. And every year he and his wife would go to uh, Africa, you know, on a missionary trip. And so since I was interested in all this stuff, you know, I asked him one time about Africa. And the stories he told me, like you said, were just outrageous. And like you said, that, you know, evil occurrence there, at least the places that he was. He must have went to the same place as I went because I, at some points, I actually was thinking I might be buried there. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't going to make it out. He said they used to see a lot of light, like big balls, like you know, like like what well, we would call an orb, but um, like the size of a basketball. And he said it was almost a nightly event. And he says, strange as it sounds, and he saw people become you know, demon oppressed or possessed, and he delivered some of them himself with the help of the local Christian guys there, and he, he had the wildest stories about yeah. Africa. So I, it's I wild. I, I think that's all hap- going to start happening here. I think the veil is getting really thin, man, because, you know, some of the people, things people are reporting, like those balls of light are starting to get reported with Bigfoot sightings. Like the people go out bigfooting and they're starting to see these balls of light around in the woods and stuff. Right, right. At this, you know, well, and bigfoots running around too. You know. Well, one of my listen, listen to this story. One of my friends, who's also a Christian, was walking around Home Depot minding his own business. Right. He says all of a sudden this old lady, this older lady, starts staring at him. She ran up with her cart and like slammed into his cart, and she said. Just because you're a Christian doesn't make you better than anybody else. And she started going, F you, F you, F you. <laughs> and he said when she was saying it, her eyes were like black. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like her face went back to normal and she just walked away like nothing happened. And there was a guy standing behind him, and the guy even behind him said, what the hell happened? And he's like, I don't know. So, I mean, that, you know, wow. you know, that happens think to about me. That for a second. <laughs> That that happens to me too all the time. I mean, I could just be walking down the street and somebody will just be walking by. All of a sudden, they start mean mugging me, and the next thing you know, they're they're ripping me. You know what I mean? Like they don't touch me though, but they they act like they are. You know, they're all up in my face and waving their arms around and telling me, you know, that, that um, they're better than me and I'm not any better than anyone. And I never, I don't even know these people. Yeah, I mean, don't you think that these are people that are like, maybe they're not possessed, but they're like, say, demon oppressed, that, you know, something else is controlling them? I would, I think so. I, I would say something's in them. And, you know, you could say, well, they're real super sensitive. What For what? Why would they be so sensitive to do that? You know what I mean? Like, that's like craziness. You know, like sitting, and I, I had to ride the city bus a few weeks ago my car has been having problems and i was just sitting at the city bus stop and this girl came and sat down then the next thing i know you know she was like all jumping in my face and everything and calling me names and and i just sat there looking at her i didn't even say anything maybe you deserved it maybe (laughs) but but only she she did like that lady you're talking about all this you know she was at the bus stop with me but then all of a sudden, her whole thing changed, and she just walked away like nothing. You know, it's like, whoa. Yeah. See, I'm wondering if these people even know that they're doing it. I have no idea. <laughs> Some, somebody, somebody, yeah, like, like you said, that old lady in Home Depot, whatever it was yeah. attached to her, simply overtook her body, did what it did, and all of a sudden put her back to where she was before, and she didn't even know. Man, trippy. Wow. He said the guy. Yeah, he said the guy behind him looked like he was scared to death. He said <laughs> his eyes were real big. He looked really shaky, and he said, "I'm out of here." And just, like literally ran the other way with his cart. <laughs> well, even sometimes I feel like running. Tell you the truth, you know, you see him coming. Like sometimes when you see him coming, and they start yelling and screaming and running at you, I feel like running. I really do. I mean, like, the, like for instance, the thing I saw at work the other day. You know. 
I could tell right when I saw it that it was something that was never alive. And I'm thinking, why, you know, why is this thing here? Why is this thing bothering these people? And, uh, you know, and then as, and then as the, uh, you know, the, the, the story spread around the bakery, then of course I heard about, you know, 10 other things that's happened before I started working there, you know? Well, you, you could, you could actually go to the, the guy that owns the building or the guy that rents the building, you know, that has the authority, and you and him could mm-hmm. actually get rid of it. I mean, I'd love to be able to get, get the problem with why I work is there's people in there 24-7 almost all the time, because I'd love to uh. get in there by myself someday. And, uh, you know, with the distractions of work and everything, you know, obviously I don't want people, you know, my workplace, you know, watch me walk around, uh, you know, with a big Bible getting rid of something, but uh, I sure felt sorry for those ladies. In fact, one of them, as she was crying, she goes, I'm not taking any chances. And she pulled a necklace out of her work uniform shirt. It was a big, like a six-inch long wooden cross. It looked like it should be on a wall or something. She goes, I'm not taking any chances. And both of them were crying, and I could tell that they had an experience because they were shaking and crying. You know, and they both certainly said, if I have to go back in this room, I will quit. Wow. And I said, and so I said, no, I'll fix it. I'll, I understand. I said, I'll take care of it. I moved. That's what they had to work with on a daily basis. I moved it out to where they work. I set up a new table, like only a little work area for them to get that job done so they wouldn't have to go in there. But and it's funny, too. There's something going on there because there's a hallway, just a hallway in a dead end hallway. And there's like three offices on each side. So there's like six, and they're just like storage offices. And they have automatic lights. When you walk in, the lights turn on. So I've been standing there before. Like no one can come in from a different direction. There's one door in, one door out. I've been standing there talking to people before, and I'll see the place light up, right? And there's no one there. So me being the smart aleck I am, I'll walk in there, open the door, and go right into that room that they don't like. And that's the only room lit up. So it's as if someone walked in and went into that room. And uh, so I know there's something going on, but right. you know what it is, I don't know. But all I can all I can tell you is that particular thing I saw was never human at any time. Yeah. All right, Chris. Hey, we're gonna let you go. We're gonna get Heidi on here pretty soon, and uh, <laughs> I want to talk about a couple more things. So hey, uh, keep me updated awesome. on on what you're doing, and uh, if you have any other cool <laughs> stories, make sure you call back in. Okay. It was good talking Absolutely. to you, bro. All yeah, right. Th- 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 me on no Jeff problem, man. I'll, I'll talk to you I'll soon. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Okay, see ya. Okay, okay bye okay, guys. Bye. Okay, um, yeah, I'm talking with, not talking, but texting back and forth with Mike Smith, our conspiracy guy, and people are um, talking about the loud booms. Um, I'm trying to figure out where they were heard. It sounded like it was coming from my house. So it, well, it, it, it from it, here, you know, where yeah, we are. I, I think this was nothing on the ground i think it was in the air I like think. a sonic boom i don't know i don't know what they were but uh as soon as i get to more information on that i will give you guys the info but i felt them we both heard them here um they were just loud boom boom yeah and that's I, what fe- I, heard I felt too. it and i felt it in my stomach well it actually sounded like it hit the wall too you yeah, know what i mean like yeah like yep like yep exactly and i thought like a large door slam or something, right. but we don't have any large doors here in the no. studio. So, um, you know, uh, before we get a hold of Heidi, you know, I've talked about, I don't really talk about my experiences very often. Um, I have had some in the past, um, and I've talked about them very, you know, I've had, eh, I've heard things, right? Um, there is one incident that happened to me at my parents' house when I grew up, where I grew up in Sanger, and I completely spaced it out. Once in a while, I will remember it. Uh, I was in elementary school when it happened. I must have been, I don't know, like between first and third grade. I mean, second grade. I remember my my middle sister, she was in diapers, and I remember that because my mom was changing her diapers in the family room, but what what happened and uh, i don't know to this day why but after my mom changed her diaper she was going to go 
to the kitchen to take the diaper out to the trash can. And when she opened the door, she, there was a cat right there on, on, on I don't want to say on the doorstep outside and a not standing but like if it was in his back and his hind legs and just sitting there and it was frozen just like this and my mom freaked she screamed and started to cry I went to the kitchen and I saw this cat I don't remember the color I don't I don't think it was black but it was placed right there so as soon as you open the kitchen door, there it is right there on the cement on the outside. And it was like in, in this, I don't know how you use fetal position. I don't know, just like, just like this, right? Like this. And it was frozen. And it did not, it did not freeze. It was in the summer. So we didn't have, it wasn't like it was frozen from any cold. Um, it was, it was something that was put there for a specific reason. Um, you can tell it wasn't, it, it was a scary it was very scary. I remember it to this day. And, you know, my mom and my dad told me, and my grandma was there at the time, and, and they told me to go outside in the backyard to go play. And I remember I was out in the, my, with my big wheel on the patio. And I, see, I, I saw my dad walking on the side of the house with a shovel and the cat on the shovel. And he was, you know, he was walking like this with the cat still in his position. And they took it to the backyard. Back in Sanger, we, you know, we happened to have had a, a very large backyard. And my dad threw it in a um, a barrel, and he they burned it. But I will always remember that. I, I again, I was very small when it happened. I don't remember the reason why it was there. Um, did some somebody obviously placed it there? Was it a spell? Was it somebody trying to put a spell on us? I remember that. Um, that they were doing construction. No, I don't think that's what it was. Um, that it, uh, there was some evil things going on back in the day. I, uh, you know, and, and there was uh, some very bad people that we were involved. But um, I remember that, that was, I will always remember that day of that cat completely frozen, stiff, right there in front of our door. And um, it, it, will, it, it, it embedded in my brain. I will always remember that. You know, that plus other things. That's why I know there's evil in this world. Because things like that. Um, and it, it scared me. And it's, I know my mom. It terrified my mom big time. So let's get Heidi on the phone. Your dad did the right thing, though. Um, Burning it is... I wouldn't have buried it or nothing. No, no. They burned it. See, my mom, my grandma, um, was very... For all those who you know, grew up in a, with a Mexican family, me... Um, my grandma, d you know, <laughs> for all those who are listening, have your grandmas who used to, um, do things on you with eggs and stuff like that. That was, that was my grandma. Okay. And I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, she went back there, did some prayers on it and, 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 and we burned it. Uh, but yeah, that was the right thing to do. Yeah. So I, I know it was evil, whatever it was, whoever put it there was definitely trying to put either put a spell on our family or was doing something. But you know, my mom, my grandma went back there and she did what she had to do and, and, uh, they burned it and, and there you go. Now, should I wait for Heidi to call me or should I call um, Heidi? No, go, go ahead and call Heidi. We were like five minutes early, but that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm supposed to be playing music right now. But okay. No, it wasn't like a lot of now. No. <laughs> and we're trying to get a hold of Heidi. There she is. <laughs> it's, it's, did you hear me? Well, yeah, we hear you. We're, we're a little early. Sorry. That's all good. <laughs> Oh, we, oh, we we get you and stay on there longer, so that's why. Oh, that's cool. So, How's hold on. it going? Good. We're trying to get you up here on the really screen good. here. A couple of seconds. Hold on. Let uh, Alan do his stuff. And well, I, I she can see me. I can't see her yet. Oh, okay. So as soon as so you. Oh, listen. oh, here. Hold on. Let me double check. Usually there's something. Okay, I see the problem. Okay. And there you go. There I am. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. 
Yeah, we just talked to Heidi a little while ago. We were trying different things because, um, you know, our Skype was has been acting up lately. And we think we figured out what it is. Um, so we tried it and we fixed it. And I think it's going to work out now. So Very cool. So All right. Well, Heidi, tell everybody who you are, what you're all about, and go for it. Oh, boy, say a prayer. <laughs> 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 really, huh? <laughs> Well, um, I, I guess I'm, I'm like the newest member of this lovely crew. Um, I try to uh, give a little advice on some odd things and also introduce what's going on that's odd in the world. And I invite people to write me at uh, dustoutlander at gmail.com with their comments, questions, or things that they've experienced, pictures, drawings. And uh, yeah, so I'm someone who's experienced a lot of crazy stuff and do my best to try to open up the eyes to the world. <laughs> right on. And uh, Heidi Heidi uh, sent me over some photographs. And what we're going to do right now is as she is explaining to us the photographs she sent to us, I'm going to show them to you on the screen. So let me go ahead and pull them up right now and go there. And yeah, I bet you that just totally messed up. But OK, so I'm going to go ahead and put I up picture number one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going right. to try to get you guys on a split screen myself so I can see what you guys are up to. Cool. All <laughs> right. You I are see on. You. you can't see me? Oh, I see you guys. Yeah. But I know it's like a little camera. I haven't I haven't figured out how to make it the big camera, you know, to split the screen. And I, I was actually trying to use a different computer. We, we were trying everything because of that weird sound that was happening yeah. i think we figured it out though so that's cool yeah okay. finally but only now we're back to the little bitty camera again oh at least it's 1080p but it's only it's 10 feet away you know that's oh, why that's why you see us like that I, I think everybody could see us on their screen but we're like in the little <laughs> box at the bottom yeah. of the right. big picture right, right, right yeah and for me i'm pulling yeah. up the documents on my computer too so i try to squeeze it over so i can see you guys and uh now, why do you want to see us? You don't have to see us. Oh, sure I do. I want to see if you guys are doing anything outrageous, which is... Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got, I got photograph number one on the screen. Go for it. All righty. So, um, this is considered as Missouri UFO uh, uh, photos, one of the MUFON's best cases of 2014. And um, this is what happened. This is... It says, a mother and a son captured the images of a strange object moving towards them in June of 20, 2014. And the MUFON, uh, Mutual UFO Network Scientific Review Board, uh, took a look at the photos and couldn't figure out what the object might be. And they consider this as being one of the best photographic cases from 2014. So I thought it was a, a cool one to highlight. Um, the next picture, it shows the location about where this happened. Um, and they have they do have a listing for this online where you could read more about it but this took place over Oakville Missouri near st. Louis at approximately 740 p.m. <clears throat> and this is what the case description reads as and if you go and you click to the next picture too after that okay after that map it says uh, this is the quote <clears throat> this is a mother driving with her 14 year old son noticed the metallic object in the sky in the late afternoon of June, well, this says June 8th, 2014. At first, they thought it was a plane, but the reflection of sunlight from it appeared very bright. Initially, the object appeared small, but that changed as it got closer. As it approached, it appeared gray with an oval shape, and her son rapidly took 13 photos within eight seconds. Boy, those kids are quick. Uh, <laughs> shortly thereafter, they lost track of the object as they exited the freeway. Uh, analysis of the photos, and you can go ahead and click through them as you as you wish, because they're of the same object, and they're they're pretty fascinating. He got some pretty good shots. Um, shortly thereafter, they lost track. Analysis of the photos revealed that the object's apparent size in the sky was roughly that of the full moon. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty huge. Uh, and uh, photo analysis eliminated the possibility of it being an insect, bird, bat, or conventional aircraft as the object in the 13 photos. The object was disc shaped and its distance was between 500 to 1900 feet away. This would fit <clears throat> with an object between 5 to 20 feet in size. 
and traveling between 150 to 600 miles per hour. And um, let's see here. I'm scrolling down through the pictures myself to so see. So that, that would put it like within <clears throat> the means of a jet or something like that. I mean, they could go that fast about. Oh. But, huh. you know, 600 miles an hour, the top speed of maybe a Learjet or something. Wow. But only they have <laughs> they have wings. That does not have wings. That's pretty wild. So this is more of what the witness wrote. Uh when just exiting off inter Interstate 255 by Exit 2, I noticed a metallic object in the sky, and it was very brightly reflecting the sunlight. At first, I thought it was a plane, but the reflection of the sunlight from it appeared very bright. The object appeared small, but it did appear larger later on as it got closer. It appeared gray at a distance, but then it looked black later on. It was very close uh, to the JB Bridge, the shape was hard to tell with how bright it was, but it looked like it was the shape of an oval. The object was first far away from my location. There also appeared to be another object in the photos, although I did not see it, unlike the main object. I don't know. I didn't see that a second object, but maybe there is one. I think, I think in like one of the first photos or something, <clears throat> there is something a little strange. Um, they were nearly above the JB Bridge. My son rapidly took 13 photos within a, about 7 or 8 seconds. The objects traveled very quickly in a very short amount of time. It is hard to say how far they traveled because they appeared too far away to tell where they were precisely. They traveled away too fast to be planes or helicopters. They both moved northwest towards me. They both traveled together, together too. They then traveled, started traveling south, and they both left streaks in the sky. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, these streaks looked as if they were both at lower elevations than the objects were at. They both moved fairly quickly then, but def definitely not as fast as they did when traveling northwest. I lost tra track of the object because I was just getting off of the Interstate uh, 255. During the sighting, I felt very excited, but a little frightened to see such an unusual object. After the event, I felt as if this had to be shared. And uh, then it says in an interview with Open Minds UFO Radio with Robert Powell, uh, MUFON's director of research and head of the SRB, he says knowing the speed of the vehicle the witnesses were in and their exact location was a great help in estimating the size and speed of the object. Uh, often images with a small object moving quickly through the screen turns out to be bugs, but he says with the car moving at about 50 miles per hour and the speed of a bug, it would have only been in view for a fraction of a second, and it would not have been possible to catch it in several photos spanning a few seconds. In order to check the SRB's work, uh, Powell sent photos to, I don't know, IPACO, a conservative group of UFO photo analysts, uh, analysts in France, which have been involved with official UFO investigations in their country. Unlike the U.S., France actually has an official UFO investigation organization that is a department in their national space agency. Well, that's cool. Um, they looked at the 13 photos, and their conclusion was the same. Powell says they could not identify that it could be of any type of bird, insect, or anything like that. Powell says one possible conclusion was that the object is a disc-shaped drone, but it does not have any of the telltale signs of a drone such as propellers. Uh, most of the photos from the case are seen here. So, I thought that was a cool case. Cool. <laughs> Do yeah. you see the second object they're speaking of in the streaks, though? No, but uh, the last the last photograph of the... Uh, you can actually see the round disc parts. I actually zoomed in big time on that one. Yeah, it looked good. I liked it. Wow, it's very, very cool. It, it almost looks like um, the little peas when... when when we were kids, we would buy these little peas and a straw, a pea shooter. Mm -hmm. It uh -huh. almost looks like one of the little peas, you know. But I know a camera would, would not pick that up. It would be too little <laughs> to pick up. But yeah, it could I travel at that kind of speed. When you look at uh, picture number three, I think it is, it has an exit sign on it. It looks like off to the right of the main object is a second object with a streak. Number three? I think so. That has the exit sign in it. Oh, oh no, I'm no, sorry. No. Maybe it's four. Hold on. Maybe yeah, yeah, it's yeah. four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah, the fourth one. All right, let me pull that one up. All right, let me see if I can zoom in on that here. Um, 
Okay. Oh, okay. There's the one on the right, if that's what you're talking about there. Yeah, there's like another little faint object. Pretty cool. <laughs> that mm, that could be, well, it's hard to say. I see what you're saying, though. It's on the right-hand side, about four inch, three inches to the right. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know. Pretty wild. <laughs> and I've got a story here. That's cool, though. I think that's pretty awesome. Cool. Let me see it. Let me hear it. Cool. Love it. <laughs> All right. So I've got this story and kind of a, a follow-up to this email that was sent to me. Okay. It says, Dear Heidi, so I just recently got your book, The Hat Man, True Story of Evil Encounters. And a lot of things were mentioned that have made me think. I'm actually using it for an English project, is what he says. <laughs> um, he says, I don't have a lot of time on my hands at the moment, so I'll make this snappy. Basically, I've had friends nearby from other parts of the world who have seen the hat man. Thus, it has raised my awareness. And because I looked for him, I'd seen him as well, but very, very briefly. Anyways, from my own personal experiences with the spiritual parallel, as I call it, both good and bad, I have taken a personal fascination with demonology. Now, I will say that I have never believed in ghosts or aliens, but the way you present these ideas is the same way I ponder it to myself, wondering if I'm just looking at it the wrong way. He says, I'm a Christian as well, and I'd love to know how these things work. I guess, if anything, I don't have specific questions, but a lot of stuff to talk about. I don't want to take up too much of your time, however. I don't have a lot of reliable sources for demonology, and they're not easy to find. So I decided to contact you, as you seem down to earth and knowledgeable of, of these things. So basically, I have a lot to talk to you about, if you're up for that. Anyways, I hope you find time to respond, then I must go and tend to some daily work. Thanks for reading. So, um, I told this person to find me on phrase, Facebook, and uh, I chatted with him. And, it turns out that this guy is a real young guy, and uh, I know you guys have met with these people that are really, really, really like playing with with dynamite. You know, like he's like really wanting to know too much, and how can he summon this to come to him? Because he just wants to see the Hat Man, though he thinks he saw him very briefly. And I was like, isn't that proof enough? Okay, so you know he exists. Why do you want to take this further? And right. um, this this guy he just was i don't even know he was just it, it was it was like an uncomfortable uh i was worried for him type of thing i i guess that's that's the best way to to put it and uh then coming to find out that his father is a, a minister and i'm like why don't you just you know stay more more fascinated with the positive then since he is interested in both things and um and, and I thought that I convinced him of that, and you know, just you know, to to stick with that and everything. And uh, and he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I understand. He's like, yeah, it's just a interesting topic, and you know, I, I thought he was gonna, you know, truly leave it alone. But again, people like to play with fire, seem to keep dabbling with flames. And uh, a couple of days later, he's like telling me on Facebook again in the chat that um, he was out to dinner with his younger brother who's not even a teenager, and uh, his dad, and his little brother says, I think this place is haunted, the restaurant. And he's like, why do you say that? And he's like, I looked up and there was this man in a black suit and big hat looking down at me. And, you know, I, I try to warn people, it's like, if you keep looking for the devil or demons, you know, it's not like they're going to behave the way that you want them to. They're going to go after your weakest link, you know, because you're prepared. You want to see them. You want to, you know, experience this. And then he goes after your kid brother. You know, it's, um, I don't know. It, it was just such a disturbing uh, thing. And, and I try to tell people that uh, just, you know, love your ignorance. <laughs> love your ignorance. Don't. Don't play with this stuff if you if it's not necessary. I mean, just for curiosity's sake. I mean, oh, I just I don't even know. I don't it's, even know. It's the ultimate Pandora's box. <laughs> Once you open it up, 
you can't stuff it back in there and close right. it. It's out and it's out for good. You know, you're on a crash course then. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, oh my God. And I'm just like, I thought you were going to leave it alone. I, I'm like, maybe it was too late, you know? And I'm like, it, and I'm sorry, but there's like a contagion to it too. It's like, yeah. sometimes when I talk to people on this stuff, they do experience this stuff. He's trying to find a way to get in touch with the freaking hat man. And the hat man, you know, instead taps his little brother on the shoulder to say, hello, I'm here. And uh, I, I sometimes feel responsible because it's like, Oh, I don't know. It's like the these dark things hear you. They see what's going on. You want to hear? Not. You want to hear a really good one now? Yeah. Okay. Now, my family are Native American, mm -hmm. um, and on my wife's side, they're they're Cherokee. Okay, and mm -hmm. they have a oh, I don't know. He's like a, a ancestor that's I don't know a couple of times. I don't know what you call a great great or something like that great great grandpa something like that yeah. and he was the shaman of the tribe or the medicine man okay mm -hmm. but he would dress like the what the hat man wears okay oh so now these things are starting to be seen by some some of my wife's sisters and uncle and stuff like that and mm -hmm. they are you know First, they ask me, what do I think? And then I tell them, you know, what we're what we're what we tell them, you know, and then they say, uh, no, well, it isn't that that's our uncle or their great, great, whoever. And they're yeah. they actually are welcoming this thing. Oh, no. You know, and I'm, I'm like telling them, no, 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 no. You know, that's what he wants. He absolutely wants you to uh, welcome him. Oh. You know, and so I'm like worried for him a little bit because, and and when you when you're dealing with Native Americans, uh, or you know Indigenous peoples, you're right? They are they're automatically already kind of woo woo. You know what I mean? Like so, this is like <laughs> this is like nothing scary or anything. Even though it does some scary stuff and it's freaking them out, they. They wonder, like, why, what is the message he's sending us? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, at least they're not scared yet. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. But only not give it time, you know. This guy right. will scare the, you know, shorts right off of you. Right, right. You know, I've I've heard of uh, stuff like that, like people assuming it's a long-lost relative and, oh, he's come back to say hello. I'm like, hold on, why isn't he at rest? Why isn't he at peace? You know, if he's a good old soul, you know, why is he scare you sometimes or grab your, your ankles, which uh, this killed me. You know, Sylvia Brown used to go on Montel Williams and perfectly describe the hat man showing up in this, this lady's house and how she'd get up from her couch and he'd grab her ankles and up from under the couch or the bed. I'm like, ah, that's <laughs> not a friendly ghost or something. Man, oh, well, I would have a heart attack. Oh okay. my God! That's like your worst nightmare. <laughs> well, you know, um, we investigate. We go to you know haunted places and stuff like that. And you know, I I you know I jump. Yeah, me too. I mean, come on, who doesn't Wait. jump, right? Like you know, you're gonna be in this old house, and all of a sudden this cat goes. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna jump. I'm probably gonna. Son of a beep. But um, it, it's just, it's fun. You know, I like getting scared. I mean, come on, who doesn't like, I mean, who, everybody gets scared. I don't care, you know, who yeah. you are. Well, I scream like a little girl and go running out the door <laughs> and everybody's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun. I mean, come on. It, it's, it's uh, yeah. Uh, it, I don't, you know, it would take a, a lot, I think, to get me to run and scream. I, I don't know. I mean. I'm just kidding. I mean, well, you get scared, yeah. you get the, the, the willies and everything, yeah. but. I mean, I don't know. It's, Turn well, into it, a giant yeah, I mean, if you're, bump. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're walking into this old abandoned, you know, house or a farmhouse, and then, you know nobody's in there, and you're walking in there, all of a sudden somebody grabs your shoulder, and oh yeah, you know, obviously you're gonna scream, and you, uh, oh, yeah. you're gonna go, yeah. what the? I'll probably end. I'll probably squeezing my, swinging my arm like, boom, you know, <laughs> then I'm heading out the door, but. Uh, 
Well, you know and that. we're more sensitive, I think, because we've been exposed to this stuff too, so we could feel things a little bit more heightened, I think, too. I don't, I don't know if you've noticed, but like, the, like I was just saying, my own family is like talking about this, and then the shadow things, like mm. not just the Hat Man, but like cat shadows and like bug shadows and yeah, blob shadows. I mean, the, people are seeing them all over the place, and. Really? I think I even have, I might have some pictures that I could share. I was telling earlier of a neighbor. She's been, and it, when she brings the camera out, it actually tries to hide mm. and get away from her and hide behind beams in her garage and stuff. So, and she has it all on video and, and uh, like, I'm going to bring that and we're going to look at it and see if it's worthy. Cool. You know, I nice. always like to see stuff from people at uh, you know, sure. the camera work. So she was talking about maybe we could go do something at her house and help her out. Maybe mm -hmm. and we'll find out. Yeah, we'll see. Ooh. Take the camera crew, see what happens. So cool stuff. Love right. it. Right I'll, I'll put my camera on live and so you mm. could watch. Yeah, with, I'll Very tag cool. it on to Heidi with Skype and I'll go walking through there. Oh, I yeah. will so be there for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Heidi, is that it? That is it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Good stuff, Heidi. Cool. Cool beans. Scared All right. me. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. For sure. We'll see you later. All right. Thanks. Bye. Okay. See ya. Bye, bye Bye. All right. That was Heidi and from Chicago. Call in from Chicago. Windy city of Chicago. Chicago. Right. So that was cool. All right. Heidi has uh, been with us. How long has Heidi been with us? Uh, a year. A year? At least. I know. She's so. like the new person. Yeah, the new person. Heidi's been, Heidi, yeah. Heidi's been at it a long time. She's been at it for a long time. So. Her, she has probably one of the oldest websites. Um, and everybody should go check her, her websites out. I'm serious, you guys. She has some of the oldest websites, like when the web first came out. Mm -hmm. She was one of the first paranormal websites. Huh. What's that? Don't no, we're back. tell me. We're back. Don't tell me we got part no, no, due. No, 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 no. We're still on. Thank God. We are still on. So cool. All right. Um, you know, Mike Smith was just texting me back and forth while Heidi was talking, and you know, when I started doing um, investigations here in Fresno, you know, a lot of people come up to me and talk to me, um, and they tell us about parts of Fresno that they think is haunted and. And there's this place w north of Fresno called Lost Lake. Lost Lake. Lost Lake. Now, this is north of Fresno, you guys. So, um, my cousin, who doesn't now, well, he, no, I don't, oh, he might still, but they, him and my sister, uh, well, my sister at a different location, but he used to work with handicapped kids. And what I mean by handicap is, um, um, not all there, okay. Um, and they used to take them on on trips everywhere. And one of the trips, uh, some some of the trips, they would go to go to Lost Lake and have a picnic. And some of these kids, when they got off the van, would cover their eyes. They go, no, 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 right? And 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 they'd go, no, 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 and and. Like and they were seeing something? They were seeing stuff, right? And my cousin would go, what's the matter? What's the matter? And there'd be more than more than just one. All right? Really? It, and, 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 and they would cover their eyes and turn their eyes and go, no, 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 no. And they would ask them, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? What do you see? And they're going, people, people on the tree. And, and he would try to get more information. Finally, he realized that all of them who were, now I don't want to say all of the bunch coming out, of it, but several of them who would cover their eyes, they, they'd see people hanging from the tree that committed suicide in Lost Lake. Well, I wonder if people commit suicide in Lost Lake. That's what I mean. Has anybody ever checked it? Oh, I don't know. But he says oh, they, they would say they see people hanging from the trees. Or or the county seat used to be right there at Millerton. And, and in fact, my grandpa or great great grandpa was the first judge of Fresno County. And it was actually right there under the Lake Millerton. And maybe those are the, maybe the hanging trees are over there by Fryant. Where they hanged them? Were they? Yeah, you know, like, oh. you know, you, you stole my horse, oh, oh. hang him high. You know, I wonder if it was that. Dude. 
Huh. Interesting. Because now the actually the the courthouse is up on top of the dam now, like up. They actually took it all apart, brick by brick, and uh-huh. and then made it up on top of the dam. Wow, you know, I never thought about that. Um, how far is Milliton from Lost Lake? Well, it's it's um, it's right there. The <laughs> like if you're in if you're in uh, Lost Lake, right. you're looking right at the dam of Millerton. No kidding. I didn't think about that. Okay, I mean it's right there. Interesting. I, I have a bunch of history stuff about that. Like interesting. Like we had our family had a trading post in Millerton, where they had the courthouse and the jail and everything, and they had a trading post. And then one night, some uh, Native Americans came, and they were drunk, and they had a squaw with them, and. They wanted food, and they were wanting to trade some pelts and some stuff, you know, trappings for trapping supplies and food and mm-hmm. stuff. And they got real, real, real drunk and rowdy. And then the lady took the squaw, took one of my relatives and her kids off into the mountains and hid behind in some boulders and stuff like that. And those guys went ahead and burned down the whole trading post hmm. at that time. And uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of weird history. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that wasn't the hanging place. Never thought about that. Um, maybe we can do some research and, and find, find out, that find out. I know why it's called Lost Lake, too. I'm, I'm going to find out. Okay, find out. That'll be your job for Good next deal. week. So. I can't wait to tell everybody. Hold on, we got uh, my wife coming in. Long suicide common knowledge. Um, my wife just texted over me and said, Mong suicide common knowledge in that area. What? That's what she was saying, that uh, Asians committed suicide a lot in that area. Common knowledge, she says. Well, sorry, I didn't know. No, I didn't either. <laughs> the, the only thing I did know was, is there was two tribes, okay? Mm-hmm. And one were the swimmers, real strong, strong swimmers. And before the dam... The the mighty San Joaquin River was huge. They even had a uh, like a gambling boat, mm-hmm. paddle boat. It went all the way from Millerton or Fryant all the way to San Francisco, uh. and it would go back and forth, and they would gamble on it. And but only in certain like this time of the year, the spring, the snow melt, it would be over a mile wide, and one tribe couldn't swim that good. So they paid another tribe to hold on to them and swim them back and forth across the thing. So how many people even drowned over there? Right. You know, during that time. I mean, just idea. Mm. Lots of dead people's around there. Right, right, right. And Mike Smith is uh, telling me some stories that he's reading about an Asian boy that disappeared at Lost Lake. Um, You know, Lost Lake reminds me of avocado lake there's always drowning remember there used to be a lot of drownings in avocado lake I there's mean, signs at avocado lake right saying don't even swim i mean it, i heard that there's tunnels and stuff underneath that suck you down under there uh, and you, there you go. can't escape it or or yeah. bigfoots are underneath there and they pull you down could <laughs> i know they they're around there yeah they are man and, Got some stories. That, uh, I have some people who have stories to tell about avocado lake, and I'm trying to get them to come and tell me about them. And you know, um, and, and and it's hard because these people don't want to talk. Right. You know, they don't want to be laughed at. But um, oh well. Isn't that the hardest thing? Oh my god! You know, stories. there's so many stories out there, and you know that great stories that that you guys would love to hear. But uh, you know, I hate telling stories. I would rather have the stories be told by the people who have witnessed them or who know, you know, from firsthand. Um, and that's what I hate about Facebook and other websites and other shows is. That's all they do. That's is all tell they that. do is tell story, stories. Yeah. You know, okay, show me pictures, show me videos. It's just stories. 1897 1905 1936 well what proof where did you get that story you know and 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 you know it's like come on people um yeah well i I don't want to get anybody upset but um i just hate that and that's not what i want to do here um when i have a story when i get a story i want to make sure i can provide you with adequate evidence 
to back up the story. Um, like, you know. So, that, like, okay, have you found anybody for Danny? That's what the chat wants to know. No, no. Well, no. We, we really haven't been looking. Um, no, we haven't. You know? um, Some people were saying I should do it, you know, and it was like, mm, I don't know. Oh, we'll see. We could see. I probably could. I, I saw something today. Uh, yeah, why not do fooling it? Fooling around that was really cool. In it, and the video was from uh, the twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mar March twenty eighth, and this guy. The only thing you know, and we know, when you zoom in from real far, it it's gets, shaky. Right. You know what I mean. Right. But there is something there, peeking and moving around. And he he had about nine minutes of video, and there is something furry over there. He's and. I thought about like I saw it on Facebook and I thought, man, you know, I should try and because he Stab said he had more video that was better. You're talking about stabilizing it or well, not that video. He said he had way better video. This is just like a teaser, uh -huh. and he's going to come out later with the better stuff. Uh -huh. He'd be like, hey, you want to like break it on this show? Oh, go for it. But only first, I want to see the video. Like, yeah, is it is it worth anything? Right. right, right yeah. Right. I mean, I don't want to break it and then it breaks us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I know exactly what you mean. I, I, uh, I need to see it first before yes. I put it on our show. I just, you know, it's got to be good, man. I don't want to be surprised you with know, everyone. Like, really, else. is that it? Yeah. You mean, oh, <laughs> yeah, and then and then you guys are gonna start throwing eggs at us, and like, I don't want man, that. it's that. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, you guys, that's it for us. Two hours, pretty fast, huh? I know, I hate it. Get get ready. We're going to go five nights a week. Give us another two or three weeks and we'll be there. My name is Jeffrey Gonzalez with Alan Thomas, Paranormal Central. You are watching it live. Sunday night at 6 o'clock p.m. See you next week. Bye. You have been listening to Paranormal Central with Jeffrey Gonzalez and Alan Thomas. Broadcasting worldwide at ParanormalCentral.net and on our... Stay tuned for next time. Remember to keep your eyes to the skies, and we hope you witness something you cannot explain.